I am Kristen Agan, team leader for the Keller Williams Chadwick Group of Pinellas, and I am so excited that you're here today for Agent Spotlight. We are talking to Regina Tyler of the Hustle and Heart team out of the Keller Williams Seminole office. I am so excited, Gina, to have this conversation with you. Uh, and I, I got to tell you why. I'm excited to have this conversation with you because I get asked every single day by agents, mm -hmm. should I join a team? Should I consider coming into real estate and joining a team or should I stay on my own? And I think that we're going to hear about your journey today yeah. in that decision. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's why I'm so excited to have this. So tell me a little bit how long you've been in real estate and tell me a little about the beginning of your, your journey. Okay, so um, I became a real estate agent with Keller Williams and I started on um, January 6, uh, 2019. So I'm going into my third year. Third year, okay. Yeah, third year. Um, I originally started as a solo agent and I was an independent agent for um, about nine months, mm -hmm. about nine months. And um, then I went to Bold and um, I had a life-changing experience, basically, which Bef we'll get to. Before you go to Bold, yeah. how many transactions did you have in that first nine months? Five. Five, okay. Five. I did have five transactions. Yeah. Which is five more than a lot of people might have. Yeah, I, I hustled, right. to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that's interesting, yes. foreshadowing. <laughs> yes, very, very much so, yes. Okay. I, um, I wanted to hit the ground running. Um, I knew what I needed to do, and um, I just literally found focus, and I, and I just did it. It was a little difficult for myself because I, you know, I think I thrive better in um, team circumstances. Uh, but I tried to do it solo for a while, and then what were you doing prior to real estate? Um, well, I've been a buyer. Um, I've been a merchandising planner. Um, I'm a certified paralegal with the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but my last 23 years was at an electronic retail company that's here in Tampa Bay area. A local electronic retail yeah. company. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that got recently bought out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we might know who you're talking yes, about. Yes. So um, we were bought out um, by another electronic retail company, mm -hmm. and um, basically 485 of us got let go on one day. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to career change. I had to shift and rather quickly. Yeah. So um, I had actually been kicking around real estate about a year before that. I thought, oh, well, maybe, you know, I would try to get into that or, or whatever. And um, that day I said, okay, guess my decision's been made. Um, and I called up my aunt, uh, who is a Keller Williams broker uh, in Ohio. In Ohio. Yes. So I called up my aunt and I said, hey, I'm going to come up for Thanksgiving. Would you mind giving me a little bit of information on what I need to do to become in, in real estate as a field? And she said, yes. She said, as long as you tell me that the only company you're going to go with is Catherine Williams. <laughs> Gotta love auntie. Yes, yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, and she told me why. And once she explained the why, um, I, I, there was no other there was no other choice. What was the why that she explained? Um, the education, especially somebody who's new coming into the field of real estate. If you've never done real estate before in your life, mm -hmm. um, Keller Williams is probably the best company out there that can show you the how you get from point A to point Z. Um, and that was the biggest thing. She said, learn everything you can. Ask as many questions as you can. Find people that are in the market center. And she said, just, you know, become a sponge. Listen to everybody's, you know, why they do what they do, how they do it. Take notes, make it yours so it, you know, becomes natural. Um, and, um, she just said, you know, just do these things. And she said, you definitely have to do ignite, which was like the big thing, you know, the first thing that I did. Yeah. And, um, and then from there, you know, we just had other conversations. So. I, I want to take you back to when you chose the market center, you were going to jo join. Yeah. Cause I love hearing mm -hmm. what that meant to you. So yeah. you interviewed more than one Keller Williams market I did. center. I did. Why did you choose the Seminole market center to, to hang your license? Um, coming from a corporate situation, I was very much, you know, uh, in, in the moment, you know, like you, you, it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was just that, you know, get up and go. Um, or like we 
say in real estate and uh, retail churn and burn. <laughs> um, and I was so used to that. Um, when I decided that I wanted to be in real estate, I didn't want that. That was not my thing. Yeah. Um, I wanted something a little bit different. So I went and actually, um, before I got into the Seminole office, I actually had talked to Troy and, um, uh, and he had a, a class that was, you know, how to take the real estate license. Mm-hmm. And um, so it was Troy to, Walseth. You're Troy referring Walseth to Troy Walseth and Terry. Yep. And, and Terry. they actually taught the, t- the class. Upon leaving just that one hour, um, you know, you know, class, I was like, this is just a really, really nice fit. Um, and it was just organically the way that she actually was the third person that called me for an interview at a Keller Williams and I interviewed at two other ones. Mm -hmm. But the third time when I walked into the Seminole office, there was just this thing, this, this fit that I was just like, yeah, this is where I needed to be. It's, it's very family. Um, it's, it's very uplifting. People are, are just so nice to each other. I mean, I was just... I just felt comfortable there and I can't explain it. It's just, it it was just, I knew. And when she's like, okay, you know, so what do you think? And I'm like, where do I sign? And she's like, are you, I'm like, yeah, where do I sign? Right. Like I didn't, I left the interview. I mean, I was like signing papers. I I loved your, (laughs) your description of the Seminole Market Center. I'm team leader in all three of Mm -hmm. the Pinellas Chadwick Group Market Centers. And every single one has its own culture, its own heartbeat, its own Own vibe. vibe. And when you describe it that way, it just is a complete fit. There is just mm-hmm. a heart to the Seminole Market there Center. Is. Yeah, there is. Very good. Very so if you were giving advice to other agents who are looking for something, what would you tell them about, uh, about finding the right fit? Um, interview a more than one. Like, you, sh- you should do that. Do your due diligence. More than one Keller more Williams. More than one Keller Williams. Absolutely. <laughs> just, one, just Keller Williams. Uh, but yes, interview a different ones because... Right. Every one of them is a different fit. It, every one of them is completely unique. Um, if you are more of a, a beach kind of person and that is going to be what you really and you gravitate towards, then you definitely want to hit the Treasure Island. Area. You better say that since we're yes. sitting in the Treasure Absolutely. Island Market Center. Yes, so definitely do the Treasure Island. Um, but if, 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 say, country is like what you, you like and you like working with you know ranches and bigger pieces of property and things like that, well, then maybe something up in the Newport Ritchie and, and that area might be um, something that you, you would fit better in. Right. Um, mine was just like, I wanted a little bit of everything. And I think Seminole just fit for me, but definitely do your due diligence about interviewing because they're going to, and not only are you interviewing them, they're interviewing you as well. Right. So just know that, you know, it, it, it's, it's something you really should do. Mm-hmm. So before we go on with your story, because I will get back to why bold changed your life. Yes. What I, I want everyone to hear is a little bit about what you're currently doing. So tell us right now, what are you on track to close in 2020? Eight million. Eight million. Plus. Uh, yeah, I was going to say Heather disagrees with that. She gave yeah. a little higher number. She did. Oh, did she? <laughs> yeah. She, she said 10. Currently, what's locked and loaded, <laughs> you know, barring anything unforeseen is eight million. And then I do have stuff on the on the, on the burners. So, right. Yeah. So uh, completing your... Second year, yes, with eight million in. So yeah. this, <laughs> uh, just so everybody understands, Gina, this is why we're talking to you because okay. that's a huge second year. It is, okay. uh, and, and I just, don't even know. I don't know that. I just know that I just hit the door running. I mean, people awesome. do it, and that's great. That's fantastic. And what what I see, I mean, I see people pop their businesses in their third year over and over mm-hmm. again. Yeah, you, you popped a year early, so yeah. so you you made some strategic decisions Very and much. and to to make some some changes in your business after you closed those five deals in your first year. Yeah. So tell us about Bold, what that meant for you, and what was it that changed your life about it? Okay, so um, Bold, one of the like I said, my when I went uh, for Thanksgiving with my aunt, she said the two things that you have to do is you have to do Ignite first obviously. Um, and then she said, and when bold comes, you know, and it's out there, she said, I want you to, I want you to go. I had no idea what it was. I had absolutely no idea what she was talking about. Um, but when it came through, um, I was a single agent yeah. and I called up my aunt and I said, well, they're offering bold here in, in the Gulfport area. And she said, you have to go. So she basically, you know, sponsored my, my way to go. She said, I'm telling you, it will be a game changer. I said, okay. So I went and um, James Shaw was uh, teaching the class 
We were Fantastic. in that together, just so you know. Fantastic. It was awesome. It was amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so he had said, and, and I'll never forget this in my entire life for the rest of my life, um, when you get to that week that you don't want to go, you, that is the week you have to go. I will never forget those words. I will, and I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Um, and it was week four. Of eight weeks. Of, of eight weeks. Right. It was week four. And I literally got up and I'm like, I could just stay at home. I could go walk my dog. I could do anything else, right? And I was like, nope, this is the week I have to go. And I got there and that week, I cannot explain it to you, but it clicked at the table. It clicked with me and Heather, who was wind up, um, she was the captain of our table and, and all the teammates that were there. And I literally at lunchtime, I said to Heather, I said, I need to interview for the team. I said, and she was just like, okay. And at that point I knew I wanted to go from a solo agent to a team agent. And that was my own personal choice. And I just knew it was like, it was literally an epiphany moment. I cannot explain it to someone, but I I enjoyed the rest of bold. I got up every Monday and I was ready to go. And I really embrace that. And I still, I still do just about everything that they teach us at Bolt. I still have my purple bracelet. I like, see I that you're bracelet. wearing it. That is awesome. I still have it. I haven't taken it off since Bolt. Literally have not taken it off. Our leadership team's reading a book right now called The 12 Week Year. Mm-hmm. And he talks in there about when it's, it's when you, when you get out, when you, when you do things that are uncomfortable is that when you see the growth and you see the yep. change and just the act of getting up and going to Bolt when you just didn't want to put you in a place of opportunity because you yep. did something that was uncomfortable that your your self the yep. self of you that just wanted to go oh sit on the couch yep. and you went out and you easy. did it and that's when the the, the destiny clicked. happened everything came everything together just clicked. right like because all the puzzle pieces got together because you showed up i showed up sometimes i, I I, I just wish that we could infuse that in yep. agents that sometimes all it takes is showing up because if you don't show up, you can't find the opportunity. Yeah. If you didn't show up, you've got nothing. You, 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 you're, you're already behind the eight ball so, so far behind. Right. And what have you got to lose? Right. Really? Right. I mean, I, but I had everything to gain mm-hmm. um, and I had a lot to lose by just like not, not showing up. I was going to lose everything. I was going to lose faith in what I could do, right. um, you know, not feel like I was getting anywhere. Um, and I was like, no, this is, I just need to, I really need to embrace this. And I did. All right. Mm-hmm. So you made a decision to join a team. I did. That's the decision you made. And that's the, what you call a life, de- life changing decision. Best change ever. So tell me what it's like to be on the Hustle on Heart team. And you said Heather's first name. We're talking about Heather Stotts, Heather Stotts. who's the, the rainmaker, rainmaker. The, of the, the Hustle yeah. on Heart team. So tell us about your team, what's it made up of, and, and what has the, being on this team changed in your business? Oh, man. I had actually known Heather, and I had known um, all of the teammates um, before that. And a lot as a solo agent, um, you know, I had questions. So I could constantly know that if I had a question, I could go to Heather. And Heather was just so kind enough, bless her heart, she was just so kind enough to just answer those questions, even though she really didn't have to. I mean, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't on her team officially. Um, So I was the unofficial um, team member for for about two months prior to me actually joining the team officially. Okay. Um, So I could go to her at any time. Um, Once I joined the team, her experience, her and Sina's experience, and, and she's like the, the co-rainmaker of the team, their, their experience is just insane. And, and the wealth of knowledge that they both have and that they bring and the positivity that they bring to the team just makes you want to come into, the, into, mm-hmm. uh, into work every day. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I can't help but smile. I love going into work. I really do. I know that sounds so sappy, but it's true. Um, and I live 45 minutes from the market center. So it's, you know, quite a drive in, but I have no problem doing that. Right. I love it. And um, everybody brings something. Not every single person is the same. We have some that are listing agents. We have some that are um, uh, buyer's agents. Um, I'm kind of this weird mixed hybrid. 
I do a little bit of everything. Um, and it's just, it's just the greatest little team in the world. I call that a team agent. You are on a team yep. and you are an agent and you buy, you yep. help people buy homes and you help people sell homes. And I do, and I do investors. So yes. I'm one of, besides my, Heather and I, we're the only ones that are certified to do foreclosures, um, you know, short sales and things such as that. Um, so I do that as well as I do investment properties for a lot of the um, investor flippers situations. How yeah. did you break into that? It just was something um, in my past life. I've actually worked for a builder company, um, okay. you know, so I, I like the whole builder thing. Um, and I, my husband's a contractor, so I have that as well. Um, and I, I like that. I like that investment and showing somebody what, you know, their return on investment can be and, and, you know, how I can find them their house and then what we know we can put into it. And then what I have the, the capabilities um, of selling it for them so that they can turn around and we can keep redoing it. Right. So um, that's just something that I just I really liked. I, I really liked. I'm not a big lister that I know that sounds weird. I like working with buyers. I'm very good at working with buyers. Mm -hmm. Um, and listings come naturally to me. It's usually it's somebody I know from even my sphere or something like that. Um, you know, it's just, it just, that comes naturally. I'll, I'll do those, but I really do like door knocking and calling people and, and, and with buyers. So, and you know, I like it. I love that. I, I know when we've talked before, you ha had talked about how there are so many different opportunity and options, and this is the one, the path that you took. Mm -hmm. And what you saw is that there's a lot of different options yep. to to go. Talk a little bit about what it what options you saw and what you see out there for other agents to to look at. Options on team. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, one there's so many different teams, and you should don't you know if you're gonna if you're thinking about eventually doing a team, mm -hmm. definitely want to interview with multiple teams because every team will bring something different, and you, again, you definitely have to find. That, that group of individuals that you feel you're going to best you know, mix with and, and fit. Um, with opportunities, within the teams, a lot of times there's, um, they have different avenues. They have someone who's just nothing but a buyer's agent. And I, you know, um, that is just something you're gonna just go out and do open houses and you're gonna door knock and do that as you're lead generating. Then you have a listing agent, which just basically, you know, cold calls, FISBOs, um, and then, you know, um, those that are expired. Then you have those who want to do a lot of, you know, you know, working with investors. So I'm kind of like a little bit of a hybrid, but you know, definitely find what your lane is and pick your lane. Become very good at that lane. Become a master of it. How, then, how, how have you become a master of classes. the lane? I've taken a lot of classes um, on Zoom, when everything kind of shut down at Pro, they were doing a lot of online classes and they were only costing like 20 or $30 or whatever it was. I think I took like six classes. I mean, I was just like, here's an opportunity, they're half price and it just can help me just be better. Um, any nuggets that I picked from them, I figured couldn't hurt. Um, then, you know, ask someone. If you want to shadow with someone who does nothing but, you know, commercial, Take you know, call them up, ask them, say, hey, do you Absolutely. mind if I shadow with you and see how you do it? That's the whole point yeah. of the productivity department, right? Yes. Of, of the ability to actually have a business coach, have a mentor yep. that you can go and say, uh, can, I, can I go on your listing appointment and watch? Can I, can I do an open house for you? Can I observe your, your buyer's consultation? Can we lead gen together? Can we script yep. practice together? That, that mm -hmm. whole mentor, tell me, you talked about the importance of that. So talk mm -hmm. to me a little bit more about that. So one of the things that I like to do and a lot of people will have is I I'm like really good at open houses yeah it's my thing so I am like the unofficial uh, trainer of open houses so even other people from other teams will say hey you know if you need to shadow someone and you've never done an open house go with Regina and, and do an open house yeah. um, and and learn that so um, you know just reach out to people people want to share their information and their knowledge they have no problem telling you what you, you, the pitfalls that they've already gone through save you a lot of money, mm -hmm. um, what works, what doesn't work, but then try everything. Like you had said earlier, um, you know, get uncomfortable, get comfortable being uncomfortable. I don't know how else to explain it That's to someone. That's perfect. I never door knocked before in my entire life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done sales and stuff like that, but I've never door knocked. I thought I would never like that. 
I like door knocking. I would much rather door knock and be able to mirror and match someone as they're yeah. walking in. I can tell if they're frazzled. I can tell if they've got kids or whatever the deal is mm -hmm. going on. I can mirror and match that much easier than to just straight up cold call someone. Um, but I got out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and I found something that I thought I would be uncomfortable doing. Mm -hmm. I'm very comfortable doing. You actually Go love figure. it, right? Um, I did get out of my comfort zone and I did call a couple of, you know, for sale by owners and stuff like that. Not my thing. I can tell you that was an awkward conversation. I don't care how much I scripted. I still didn't make it. It just didn't sound right to me. So I didn't do that. But you have to be able to find out what you're good at in Excel and what you're not. Then understand that that's not. And the, but then find something that you are. Right. And then do it that way. Okay. So you talked about open houses. I have so many questions that I want to go back to. I can't walk away from this one though. So you talked about open houses and we've all heard the stat that 1% of houses sell, sell at open houses. Yeah, very small. Right. Is, is that your experience that you just don't get any real good leads from open houses? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Um, at open houses, um, at the open house, I've sold six of them. Six, six houses at, at the, the open, open house. house. Or so I sold something right from the open house. Like there was another one right down the street that was bigger house. Mm -hmm. um, for for a Keller Williams actually in Tampa and it wanted to be in her sister's listing and I just sold a bigger one but it was at the open house literally yeah. mm -hmm. I, they make fun of me at the office and they'll say like my open houses are pretty much like one float short of a parade <laughs> um, I do I have a lot do, of do, oh do. yeah literally it's like do, 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 do. yeah there's that um, <laughs> I have flags I have spinners I have signs um, I just, I have a lot of jam, but I get a lot of people to come in and that's the best. Um, so it's, it's eyes in. And then if the open house is not what they're looking for, find out what they are looking for. Don't, don't, don't take no. I'm more into a slow yes before a fast no. So I keep asking Wait, wait, wait. hold on. Say that again. Say it slower. I'm into a slow yes before a fast no. So give me an example of that. So if someone says, oh, this house is not the right size and house for me. Okay, totally understand. So what I hear you saying is that you are looking for a two bedroom, one bath, not a three bedroom, two bath. Okay, great. I understand mm -hmm. that. I can probably, if you look on my computer, I've actually have opened up that there are a couple of other homes that might fit your, your parameters. Um, or they'll say, well, this one's a little bit, you know, too small. Okay. So what I hear you saying is you're looking for something with a bigger backyard, possibly with a pool. Um, and if you're looking for more rooms is schools important because obviously then we have to try to find them, you know, something in a particular school zone that they might be interested in. But you, you never to say, no, this is not where I want to be. And then just, and then they leave. And another thing, ask for their information. Never be afraid to ask them for their information, but I never do it right off the bat. So I'll introduce myself when they come walking through. The first thing I say to them, I'm like, woo, welcome home. And I know that sounds <laughs> kind of silly. And people will laugh. They'll do just like you did. Yeah. I'm like, hey, don't laugh, because that actually has happened a couple of times where right. people have actually walked into their house. <laughs> right, right. And then it kind of breaks the ice. So um, they're a little bit more comfortable when they're walking through the house. I think that that's genius. It, uh, uh, a laugh, a little humor, always. Goes a long way. And that's presumptive selling right there, yeah. you know? All of that together yeah. just creates an environment where they can relax. Yeah. And, I'm not and, pushy. Right. So and it just came look, off as funny. Right. When I think when people walk in and agents are stoic, they they're like, you know, what's this yeah. gonna be like? They like they're well, they're they're already, they're already like, oh, this person's gonna ask me for all my information. Right. They're already right. prone to on that. guard. Right. Yeah. So okay. that just breaks down their guard. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. Welcome home. Yeah, that's it. Every single person gets in the house, the first thing I say to them is welcome home. And yeah. then they kinda laugh, like I said, and then we kinda go on. Give them some information about the house. And then it kind of kind of let them just kind of walk around and, and, you know, and do their own thing. So you don't seem to hover like a helicopter. You just mm -hmm. kind of let them do their thing. Um, but while they're doing that, I also ask them questions. Mm -hmm. So are you guys from the area? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Oh, wonderful. Where do you live? Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll say, you know, well, we're renting. Oh, I understand. So is it, are you, a, now they've told me that they're a renter. Great. Are you a first time home buyer? Wonderful. Do you already, have you already been pre-approved? Do we need to kind of get you something? So it's already giving me other questions that I can sort of ask while they're kind of looking around in the cabinets yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, so, and then once they're kind of done and, you know, we've kind of had a little banter back and forth and whatever the deal is, then that's when I actually ask them for their information. Um, the one thing I can tell you is people don't like to be the first on one of their lists. Okay. So that, you know, that open house thing, you know, have on there, be smart 
take one, um, have somebody in your, your office center write their name or you know address or whatever the deal is and fill out completely in black ink. Then have someone else in a different handwriting write a different one in blue ink. Make multiple color copies of that because that's going to literally be for the rest of your life what you're going to use. Can I tell you that my mom and my cousin were at every one of my open houses even though they live in Ohio. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. So then instantaneously when you ask someone to fill out they've already saw two people have already filled that out yeah they don't feel like oh okay and they just naturally will fill out information and how I get them to fill it out basically is I ask them look you took time out of your busy schedule on this beautiful Saturday to come into this open house today as a thank you can I at least get you to write your name and address down so I can send you a thank you card right who doesn't want a thank you card nice. again I'm getting their information. It's coming across from contribution, which I truly am going to send them a thank you card. That's the first thing that I do. Um, and then, you know, just kind of take it from there. Then you follow up. You have to put that in your database. This is where a lot of new agents make a mistake. They don't follow up. And that can be detrimental. You won't be in business for long if you're not following up with these people, mm -hmm. uh, with anybody who's on there. So put it in your database. You know, text them, you know, as soon as you get home to say, hey, I just want to say thank you so much for showing up my, my open house. Um, if there's anything that I can do, please just give me a thing, a, a call and text your business card. If they didn't take your business card off the table, it's harder to lose a text. Yeah. So it's on there. Then follow up with a thank you card. And then a week later, follow up with an email. You've touched them three times in less than three weeks, but you've done it in such a way that it doesn't some, come across as like, like this. Um, and then you just reach out to them as organically as you can. When you do the, um, I always forget what it's called. You DTD2? Know when, oh, bless your heart. <laughs> so I, I say eat the database one, one alphabet at a time. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Because it's too big to try to do it once and it, it becomes very overwhelming. But yeah. again, I learned that in bold. That was a big thing. Um, and you just, you put them in there and then you just reach out. And I will tell you something. I, I got a, I've got a listing that I just, from reaching out to someone from an open house a year ago, May, um, I'm, it, they have a, a place on the beach that I'm listing for them. Actually, I'm going to take photos today. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So let's go over this. You have told me that in around an open house, mm -hmm. you door knock. Door knock beforehand. You, beforehand. You put out a parade. Every, what? One what? One float short one of a parade. One float short of a parade. <laughs> so signs, spinners. Flags. flags. Something flags. to get your attention. You have to. Right. Like Hansel and Gretel. Like you'll, you'll know where I'm going all, all right. the time. You have a sign-in sheet. Yep. You have a greeting and a script that you use. Every time. You have a long list of questions and uh, a way of engaging them yep. uh, organically yep. that feels natural and not like you're pushing. Nope. Um, you listen. Yes. You listen. You have to listen. You follow up with a note card. You follow up with a phone call. And a text. And a text. Okay. What? In, are we missing anything? Nope. On, on your system around open? You just gave us a system for an open house. Yeah. yeah, and it, it yeah, and it's it's not hard when you get to do it often. You just you have to make it a routine. Um, I have blank sheets that as people are walking in and they're signing in, the first thing I ask them is like, oh hey, you know, again, welcome home and all that. Um, then it, then they'll tell me things. I literally write that down on a sheet of paper. I'm writing notes. They've got three kids. They have a dog named Blue. They live. They rent. All that so that when they're done and they write their name down. I literally take their name, put it down on there. Now I have all the information that I need to add to my database so that when I'm sending them a card or I'm sending them something, you know, or an email, um, say they lived in the Sarasota area or something like that, I'm going to look and go, oh, what's going on in the Sarasota area? So I'm like, hey, don't forget, you know, the Ringling Brothers, you know, um, museum has free admission this week. You know, just something, again, be as hyper-local as I can for that particular person. Mm -hmm. That's something that, you know, what? So wait, she's telling me, you know, this is what's going on in my market center. And then on top of that, hey, guess what? Next week they're having free admission. Right. Just have something, just just something. But if they can, they know that you remembered them, a small thing, they're going to love that. And that's going from one to many, marketing from one to many to one to one. Yep. You're actually personalizing mm -hmm. your marketing to them and you're being the local market expert. Yes, absolutely. Be as hyper-local as you can. Um, that way I learned from Family Reunion this mm -hmm. year. 
um, as best you can. And then when you go to send them Christmas cards and Thanksgiving Day cards or something like that, you'll have known what their children's names are and, you know, or you'll say family so that they know that you, you remembered something like that. Yeah. Um, just like little tidbits like that. And then that just goes a long way. It goes a long way. So besides open houses in which you've gotten at least six closings from the open houses mm -hmm. and then lots of leads that you're following up on as yep. well. Um, what other forms of lead generation do you use? Um, as a team, I mean, we do get some that come in from Zillow leads and, and things like that. Um, most of mine is um, I'm out there. So I'm on a lot of different uh, chamber of commerces. I'm at museums. Um, I do a lot of home shows. So again, I'm out there just, you know, hey, I'm Regina with Keller Williams. You know, a, a home show is like the perfect place. I mean, I, I got multiple um, opportunities from that a commercial that I was able to pass on to someone else and get a referral. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, it's again, just it's marketing um, in that way. So you can do that. Has any of those things changed for you through COVID? And yeah, COVID was really, you had two choices of COVID. You could either be in real estate again and just, you know, dig deep, or you got out of real estate altogether and just thought this was it. Um, for us in our team, Heather literally said, well, all right, we have two choices. You either, you know, the, the cream of the crop rises to the top. So what do we have to do? We Zoom called. And she's like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. This, 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 and this. I took it one further. I mean, we were sequestered in our house for what, I think it was like two weeks or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I went through my database. I'm like, well, here's an opportunity to like put in the stuff that I probably haven't in a while. So I did, I put in and I wrote out over 386 thinking of you cards. 386 thinking yes. of you cards. Yes, of that probably five or six came back address returned okay that was too many for me that meant i didn't do my due diligence about following up and knowing that these people had moved so that was bad on me i will freely admit that um but it's, it was it's like less than two percent but it's still too not yeah enough. okay it's just, still not i'm just saying it. it's uh, pretty good I set, I set the bar up here <laughs> i guess so, too. <laughs> so that being said but um it was reaching back out to people they at that time people were so scared they were, they had no idea what was going on. Let's just be realistic. Okay. Yeah. Nobody had any idea. It was, everything was all henny penny in the news by putting a bright colored, cause I bought yellow envelopes, a big bright colored and just, Hey, I just want to let you know, I'm thinking of you just, you know, if the sun will shine tomorrow, I promise this will all go away. We'll, you know, we're good. We're in this together. What can I do to help if you need any food? Cause that was the big thing you want to come. Yeah. And I, literally I brought water bottles to people. I found toilet paper, which was a really scarce item at the time, apparently. And I wrote that in there. I'm like, if you need water or toilet paper, ha, ha, ha. Again, trying to be humorous, mm -hmm. you know, in a scary situation, just reach out to me and let me know. And I sent my business card and off we went. I got a lot of phone calls that were just, thanks for, thanks for thinking of me. Thanks for making one thing in my mail that came to me that wasn't a bill. It wasn't something that I owed, something that was scary, something political, right. <laughs> something, anything like that. They were just happy to see that. And I was grateful. And I actually, it was great for my business because I wound up getting a lot of um, referrals and, um, and business leads from it. Jason Abrams with Keller Williams International always talks about the fact that the the agent, everybody knows a lot of agents, right? Yep. There's, there's a lot of agents. That, but they're, re they're related to one. They're related to one. <laughs> It's the agent that's emotionally closest to them at the time that they want to buy or sell yep. or invest that they they call out to. Yep. And that is what you're doing with the follow-up from the open houses, with the po with the note cards mm -hmm. on the beautifully bright colored paper, yeah. with the, the phone calls, with the consistency of what you're doing in the systems you're put in place mm -hmm. to make sure that you reach them yeah. over and over again every year is you're staying emotionally close to them. So then they feel like they can trust you and that's the number one thing people want in an agent, yeah, right? Absolutely. Is that they can trust you mm -hmm. and that's when they send referrals as well. So. Yes, I, I, yeah. So I closed one, for example, um, that was in Brandon, a young couple and they're having, um, they're having their second baby in, in March. I literally already have it in my database that 
at the end of February, I have to send a congratulations, you know, um, on the new arrival, you know, shortly to arrive. Mm -hmm. um, I have like that already set up in my in my plans so that I don't forget. <laughs> um, and but from that, I actually got two other brothers that, because I took such good care of them. They referred me to two other siblings. And, um, and I'm trying to find them homes as well. So awesome. If you do a good enough job and you are not afraid to, you know, put yourself out there, you, you'll get it. Well, and if you follow, follow up after the close too, and you're not yes. a, a transaction agent no. in that you're, you, the transaction's done and they're done. <laughs> if you yeah. stay in relationship to, with them and you set the expectation of yeah. to send referrals, that's when you get referrals, yes. right? Our our motto at Hustle and Heart is it we are we are have relationships long after the transaction is completed. It literally is on our cards. Um, and I tell people at the closing stage, well, we are so not done. This just means I just get to send you a pie at Thanksgiving and I'm sending you Christmas cards and all of this. I, I, I tell them, this is just the beginning. Now I get to see you get to go on the, my Facebook and I wanna see how all your the changes you're doing in your house and all, and they do. They send me stuff. Oh my gosh! Look, it went from this bathroom, which was like you know Barbie pink, yeah. and now it's like this really cool bathroom or whatever the deal is. And and they'll they'll do that. They'll put that on my Facebook page and and things like that. So that's all. It's it's nice. And then you just send back something like, wow, that's like amazing. Right. Yeah. Right. So well, the, top of line, top of mind. Right. They're top. Right. They want to share with you because you were part of that journey with them. Oh yeah. And what a, what a beautiful yeah. thing. It's, a, it's an emotional journey, a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And some of them took a long time to get. It, it's only 30 days for the transaction, let's just say ish. It could be six months that you were planting that seed, trying to get them to that 30 day mark when we can find a house mm -hmm. that got, got under contract. And then, you know, all the way through. How many um, closings from referrals do you think you've gotten this year? I didn't prepare you for that one. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Eight. 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 So how many total transactions? This year mm -hmm. to close? Mm -hmm. I'll have, I'm at 30 now. Wow. So maybe 35? 35, 36. 36. So you've averaged about three a month. Yes. That's consistency. Yes. Yes. All that's, right. That's, uh, that's hitting it hard. <laughs> it's yes. like some days I'm drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> I lie not. Um, and, but I'm, that again is where my team has benefited me. Right. So as a solo agent, I don't think I could have done as many. Going from five in one year. Yeah, there's no way. To 35. Yeah, this year. Wow. That's a huge, uh, but that's I, I leverage. Haven't, I haven't calculated team. it. So let's talk about the leverage. I huge. was going to ask you what the other value propositions of being on a team and every team might have a different yep, value proposition, but as you, as an agent, what was the value proposition they gave you? And you just said the word leverage. So talk to me about what the leverage on your team is for you. So to start off, I have the most incredible Rainmaker team owner. Okay, so without a doubt, I mean, props to Heather Stotts. Like, I would not be anywhere I'm at right now without her. So, so some, that's, people, some people not, might not know the term Rainmaker. And so what you mean is that she's it's the lead, lead agent. Leader of the team. Yep, lead, lead agent. agent on the team, yes. Right. So um, so that, with, without a doubt, if I have any kind of questions or concerns, she's the number one person I can go to to ask. Um, also, we have a transaction coordinator. Well, it is good to know how a transaction is done. It is good to know how a contract goes from start to finish, right. okay? You should do that. You should literally be consistent for at least three of them, do them, and, and do them well, all right? After that, get a transaction coordinator. You, you want to, you, that's not where you want to be is hung up in the paperwork. You want to go out there and you want to constantly find a new buyer or find a new listing or whatever the deal is. So utilize that person's expertise to get it executed, to fill out all the addendums, to um, make sure that all of the stuff and, and the dates are on there, that everything everybody knows the appropriate your, dates. Your critical dates. Yes, and, uh, and crosses your T's and dots your I's. Right, so you've obviously done some transactions without a transaction. I did three. And then, uh, I did the same thing. And then you've done plenty with a transaction coordinator. How many hours do you think it saved you to use a transaction coordinator oh. on every deal, just on per deal? 
on average, how many hours do you think you save? Man. I have a number Four. I use, but I'm just curious your thoughts. 40. 40. 40. I normally say 15 50. to 20. Yeah. I, well, I, you know, if you but have some. your first three transactions, you're slow, so slow, it probably was 40. Yeah. That, no, right. So maybe it's it, it, it could be a lot. I mean, there's a lot that goes on. Um, you know, well, because if I'm for each transaction, maybe it's about 15, but if I'm having three transactions sure. and the balls are up in the air, it's poor easily Carissa, saving you I mean, it. I'm calling her, I'm like, okay, here we go. We're ready to go. And I'm, here's the stuff that she needs to execute the, the contract. So you said that so perfectly. So that, that person on the team, the TC, the transaction coordinator, Man, backbone is, of the team is saving you for an entire work week. Uh, an uh, yeah. entire, entire corporate America work week, yep. 40 hours in time. I, I read in a book recently that leverage is an advantage. And yes. that's what that, that person is giving you. They're giving you an advantage because you don't have to do any of those things. Nope. No, I don't. I don't. And now I've actually hired my stepdaughter. I'm leveraged again, which if you had told me I was ever going to do this, I would have thought this is not crazy. Um, but I've actually leveraged her for like one day during the week that she comes and she does all my, she helps me to do my Christmas cards, like all the stuff that would take me hours to do, like of addressing things and stuff like that. Now I will put personal notes to everything, but she makes sure she addresses them and all that. And then she's also going to be helping me to drop off pies to people. And, and then she also does a lot of my data entry. So as I get a person that's coming in, all the paperwork and stuff that I have, she makes sure that it's put into my um, command appropriately and everything is tagged appropriately. So I'm utilizing that as well so that I can just keep hitting into there, you know, and, and going through my alphabet and it's already in there. So I'm utilizing that so you've first. Got an admin, you've got a transaction coordinator. <laughs> I have an admin. Talk about Sina. What has Sina done for your business? Oh man. So who, what, I, I think her title, I'm not sure what her title is. I want to say director of operations. But I, I, I want to say she's like the greatest hugger in the world. She <laughs> she's is. Fantastic. She's like the guidance counselor. Yeah. No, that's a, oh, that's the perfect word for her. She's, she's the, the guidance, guidance counselor. counselor and the cheerleader of the team. Yeah. If you are having an off day, Sina will just completely turn your day around. She's like, nope, we got to restart that, and then we just we she just does it. Um, but she's also a trainer. She she is meticulous about making sure that each one of us has the right classes that we go to pro for she sits and she wants to make sure that when we have our mandatory meetings like all of the stuff that we need to, to know um, like how we can get there mm -hmm. like is there something that a title company needs to come in and explain what exactly is title insurance to especially if we have new agents that may not be familiar with what that is mm -hmm. um, so she sets up a lot of like the trainings and stuff like that we do when I when I was getting ready to go for example when I was getting ready to go to um, family reunion well, they have like a plethora of classes. Yeah. She literally sat down for an hour with me and we sat down and we figured out and mapped out all the classes that I wanted to go to and I thought would be of the best, uh, you know, to make me a better agent. Right. Um, so she does. She like, like maps out. Right. Maps out, out the, yeah. the way. One of the things that you mentioned to me was the business expenses as a single Ooh. agent yeah. versus being on a team. Yep. So obviously there's always a financial aspect mm -hmm. of deciding to be on a team because you're splitting commissions that, that you're not as a single agent. Talk how that balances out uh, when you're on a team and, and the business expense that you're not having to pay as a single agent. So right off the bat, I mean, advertising is outrageously expensive. Um, dues and things like that. I mean, those are things you're going to have to pay um, mm -hmm. by yourself. Um, sometimes some teams will pay for them. Some, some teams won't. Mm -hmm. But um, the amount of stuff that you actually have to put yourself out there, you have to buy everything from name badges <laughs> to, um, you know, your big signposts, all of that stuff, photocopies, that eats you up a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. any of those copies that you have to put in, any handouts that you have to do, any listing presentations that you have to come up with, all of that is an expense. Um, you know, anything that you're like your desk fees, um, all of that, it, it's, it's super expensive and you, but you have to advertise. You literally are a walking business. Like you have to make that the best. So you have to 
to do all that. And it's, it's very, it's very costly. And people don't explain that when you go to, when you go to, um, you know, real estate school, that is not ever discussed. Not part of the conversation. Oh no. If they actually ever told anybody how much your dues are the very first time, <laughs> the very first year and you're like, nobody ever what? knows that. When no they one can. ever knows no, that. Right. They do not like, talk about that part. <laughs> no, Cause I think they would run out. They would have no, no business. I know a lot of agents who are proponents of let's increase it to $5,000 so that not everybody becomes a real estate agent, but yeah, well, but, but here's the thing. Not everyone stays a real estate agent. Yeah. Those who know how to do it and do it well will stay, but they say, what is it by first year, like 50% of those that came in thought it was going to be easy and just open up doors are not in the business after, after year one, well, maybe and, year two. And I think so much has to do with the fact that they don't find the opportunity that's right for them. Right. They just go try to be a single agent and aren't finding the training, the mentorship, and the opportunity. Oh, yeah. And so this yeah. is why your story is so significant because you sought after an opportunity, you found it, and you have, you have optimized it, Gina. Yeah. Uh, so I have w one more question, maybe two, um, okay. to end with. So I want to know, obviously, you did this work, and I want to give you full credit for that, that Thanks. you did this work. Mm -hmm to close out such a phenomenal second year. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. And I love success stories like you because it shows that when you apply yourself, it, it all comes together. So I want to read something to you before okay. I, um, before I ask you the question, I, I asked Heather about you. Heather Stotts, and she oh. said, Gina is the epitome of hustle and heart. Uh, she says she puts everything in that her closings are always amazing in an experience. And she is the definition of what an agent should be. She's like two years and almost $10 million is crazy to me. She can't believe that. And then she said she is the hustle and heart. Oh my God. What has working with Heather meant to you? Um, wow. That was really nice. Um, she is like the most amazing boss I have ever had. Now I have had a lot of bosses. I've worked for a lot of corporate companies and things like that, but she's got a lot of heart. She is brilliant. She is kind. She gives back and she makes me want to make her proud. I know that sounds ridiculous and I know she's my boss and everything, but she does. I, I really want to make her proud and like, and, and work really hard. And I think if I ever disappointed Heather, I think I would be, I would be really upset. I mean, I'd be upset with myself, but I really like having that person. I have to, you know, to show that I've done something and I've done, you know, and, and to constantly chase. And I want to be Heather, but Heather keeps getting higher. So I have to kind of keep chasing Heather and that's okay. Cause I'll never be Heather but I can keep chasing and I can keep learning from Heather and Sina and Krista and Pam and Beth and Beth and everybody and at my team. I just, my, my team is just, oh my gosh, they're my, my work, work family. I just love them all. I so. love that. I love that, that what you described, first of all, Michael Reedy always says that you should choose a coach that you don't want to disappoint. And yes. that's exactly, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's exactly what you just described. And you also described that, Heather is dreaming big enough and working big enough to, to, um, to work for your dreams, to allow room for your dreams. Yes. We're always the lid on our organization, just like Gary Keller had to dream bigger yes. to create the opportunity for all the people in his world to have their, reach their dreams. Yeah. So tell me, Gina, what is your big why? Why are you doing all of this? My kids. I have three amazing, um, actually I have five amazing children. I have my three and then I have the BOGOs with my husband. So <laughs> there are five, I have five, five. Um, they saw me um, on uh, October 17th lose my job, which I thought at the time was my identity for a long time, for 23 years with a company, okay? It's a long time. It's a long time. Um, and they saw me at the lowest of my lows. And I thought, well, that was it. This, this job had to just, this was me. It was encompassed me. I, I ate, bled, slept this particular company. And then I thought, no, 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 that does not define me. 
And my kids were like, no, Ma, you can do this. You can be anything that you want. And they actually did that. They came to me and they're like, it's going to be fine. Like, Psh, let it go. They encouraged me. And I, I, I got my license uh, in November. I took my test in December. And I started with in, in January with Keller Williams. And I've never stopped looking forward. I, have n I won't look back anymore. That was, that was then. But it's my kids knowing that no matter what you do, that does not define you. You just, you get up, you brush it off, you put your big pants on, whatever it is, and you just keep moving forward and you don't, you don't let anything like that ever get you down. You, you just can't. No matter what it is, it doesn't mean just work. It could be a relationship. It could be, it could be anything. Um, you just have to get up, learn from your mistakes. Try not to make those again, make new ones. Um, as my mom would say, if you're going to make a mistake, you might as well make it a big one. Um, just don't make the same big one. Um, and, and it's true. It's true. You know, but you will, you grow from, you learn from mistakes, you grow from mistakes, um, and you become a better, stronger person. Um, so don't be afraid of them. But don't let that thing define you and just keep moving forward. And my children, my children are the jewels and the crown that I wear every day. It's a heavy crown some days. Um, but they make me just want to get up every morning and, and make them proud. Gina, I knew hearing this whole story and hearing what you've put into your business that you would have had to have a beautiful why to, to get you out mm -hmm. of bed the day you didn't want to go to bold to yep. work this hard and have three closings a month and and do what you've had to put into to having this kind of year. So I knew it had to be a beautiful mm -hmm. reason that, that you were pushed forward every day to get up and serve your customers the way you have been and uh, be the hustle and heart. So tell me what your goal for next year is. Okay, so this year was to just double what I did my first year, which was like 2.5 or whatever it was. Um, so you're on track for over eight. So you've yes. blown that out of the water. Yes. Um, and Heather has already decided that um, she will push me um, and make me uncomfortable and get out of my comfort zones, which is good, don't get me wrong, to exceed, um, I, I would like to do well over 12, maybe well 13. Over 12, 12 or 13. I like that like bigger dozen like that the baker's dozen yeah, like so that. let's just go with it not 12 or 13 let's just focus let's on just one do 13. Thing. 13. That's my, there it is 13. okay there it is, there it is. great we'll Wonderful, see Gina. <laughs> it's a lot to do so yeah. thank you so much you. Gina, for coming and sharing your story with us thank you for joining thank us you. for agent spotlight and if you have any questions about the opportunities that that are available for you don't hesitate to reach out to any of your leadership team we are here to help you find the right seat on the bus thank you everyone Hey everybody, it's Michael Reedy, Director of Productivity here. Just wanted to tell you about an amazing class that we have going on Friday, November 20th from 1 to 3. So last month, Rachel and I did a business planning workshop for 2021. And yet what I find every year is that for whatever reason, agents seem to be surprised by the opportunities around holidays and special events. So what we're going to do, again on Friday, November 20th from 1 to 3, is take your business plan, whether it's farming or working with your sphere, and building out your strategic marketing plan through social media, print, digital, everything to make sure that you have 2021 planned for the best year ever. Now, you have to register so that we can get information to you. So it will be attached to this video as well as to the emails and other communications over the course of the next week. You will need to register. So go ahead and click on that link, add your name so that we can make sure that we get you the information before class. Again, that is marketing plan for 2021 on Friday, November 20th from 1 to 3. Hope to see you there.